Hi everyone. So in my programming videos, I've tried to keep things simple. When you're writing programs, simple is usually best. That's how you avoid bugs and unwanted behavior. Keeping it simple also makes it easy for new programmers to follow along. And that's why I started doing the programming videos to help others learn a little bit about programming. But in writing some of these demo programs, I, I actually made some things I think too simple. It's, it's easy to follow, but it doesn't always mean good performance. So in this video, let's look at a few ways to optimize a program. So let me bring up a text editor so I can work here. I like to use the Fed editor, uh, which you can install on FreeDOS 1.3 uh, using FD Impulse. So I'll just uh, type Fed and let's do a program here called uh, area. C. So let me talk about define. So I can use the define statement in C. It's not something we've talked about in these videos before, but if you're an experienced programmer, you know about it. But if you're a beginner programmer, we haven't talked about it yet. So we can use a define statement in C to define a number or a constant. So for example, you've seen me use the include statement uh, with the hash uh, tag in front and include standard io.h, but I can also do a define statement. And this allows me to define a parameter or something that's gonna get replaced in the program later on. Like for example, I might have a program where I need to do pi a couple of times, the number pi, and so I'll do define pi, which I usually would put this as all uppercase, uh, and then 3.14159, I only need to go out with it. And then if I write a program with that, so int main, and then uh, making a program that says uh, float area, and then also the circumference, and then the radius of my circle, which we'll just give it as 1.33 of whatever units. I can then calculate the circumference as 2 pi r. So that's going to be 2.0 times pi times the radius. Now I don't have to type in 3.14159 and maybe possibly get a typo there. I can just reference pi because I defined it up above. And then to calculate the area, well, it would be area is uh, pi r squared. So in other words, it's pi times the radius times the radius. And then to print that out, let's just go ahead and complete, uh, finish this and do print f uh, a circle of radius uh, that. Uh, has an area of that percent f is the floating point and then a new line there and then the radius and the area and then we'll do a second line here that says a print f um, and a uh, circumference uh, of percent f because that's going to be another floating point value and there's my new line and there's the circumference and then I return zero back to the operating system and end my program. So you can see that I've used I a couple of times in here for calculation. This is a very short program, but it does demonstrate how to use define. So if I compile this, let me go ahead and exit. So I'll do a file and then save and quit. Then I can do uh, I16 GCC. That's our IA16 uh, version of the GNU C compiler, uh, I16 GCC using an output file, oops, output file of area.exe, and then the source code is area.c, and that will now compile a program that I can run as area. So there it is, a circle of radius 1.33 has an area of 5.55 and a circumference of 8.56. Although pi probably isn't a good example here because some compilers will define that for you, but you can see the point here about using define to replace one uh, parameter with some kind of other value. Now you can use the same principle to replace a function. If you have a very short function, like a one line function, you could use a define to replace that. And when you do that, it's called a macro. So let's do that another program here. So we do a fed of a program called is odd.c. So let's say I'm writing a program where I need to know if a number is odd or even. I can write a simple function for that that tests with Majulo. So let me first of all do an include statement up here of my standard h. And then I'm going to define a function that's going to be an integer function called is odd. 
and it takes an argument that is an integer and we'll just call it n. And it's going to return either a zero or a one, or at least a zero or a non-zero to determine whether or not this is or is not an odd number. And I can use uh, n modulo with two. And so uh, the percent is the modulo operator, and that's the remainder after division. So for any number, the modulo with two will be zero for any even number because dividing an even number by two leaves zero as a remainder. So zero modulo two is zero because it's a remainder. Uh, two modulo two is also zero because there's no remainder and so on. But an odd number divided by two will always have one left. So three modulo two is three divided by two. That's one with a remainder of one. So the modulo is one. Five modulo two is five divided by two, which is two with a remainder of one. So that one line function up there of n percent two is a good way to test if a number is odd or not. So if it's an odd number, it will always return one. And the important thing about that is it's a, it's a non-zero number, and that means that's true. And it's going to be zero if it's false. It's going to be zero if it's an even number. And so that way I know that uh, is odd if it's false. That, mean, that tells me it's definitely an even number. And so I can use that in a program like this. Let's count uh, from zero to nine and print if each number is odd or even. So I can do now a, a main function. There's my int main. And let's do uh, an integer variable called count. So I can do a counting with it. And then I'll do int count equals zero. And as long as count is less than 10. So this is going from zero uh, to nine. And then uh, count plus plus. That will increment the variable count. So it's going to start at zero. So back here, it's going to start at zero. And then as long as this loop uh, has count being less than the value of 10, it will keep going. And at the end of every loop, it's going to add one. That's what this count plus plus is. It'll just increment the variable count by one. And then inside this loop, I'm just going to go ahead and print, do a print F of percent D that prints out an integer value. And then I'll put a space after it. And there's the variable count. And then if, uh, is odd for that variable count, then we're going to do a put s, which will add a new line at the end. So I don't need to do a print up here. So that'll do a put s of odd. And otherwise, or else, it will do a put s that tells me this is an even number. And there I am with that. And then I can end my uh, loop. And I said int count up here, but this is actually a for loop. Sorry about that. And then down here, I can uh, exit back to the operating system with a return of zero. And so that's my program. It's just going to run through from zero to nine uh, because count will be less than 10. And then it will print out that number. And if it's an odd number, it'll tell me it's odd. And if it's an even number, it'll tell me it's even. Let's go ahead and save that. And i16gcc, we're going to do an output of is odd.exe, and we're going to compile the is odd.c program. So if I run that program, just is odd, you can see that it's going to tell me 0 is even, 1 is odd, 2 is even, 3 is odd, and so on, all the way up to 9 being odd. And so that's how we would do that with a function, but that's not really the best way to do that. Writing that is odd comparison as a function means there's a little bit of overhead for the function. Every time I call is odd, there's just a little bit of, of work the program needs to do to make that happen. I can make that run just a little bit faster if I use a C feature called a macro. And that's a one line thing that using define where I have something that looks like a function definition. And whenever I call that as a function, the program does everything to the right of my definition. So uh, it'll even, by the way, replace a thing that looks like an argument. So let's actually edit that file again. So we'll do fed is odd.c. And uh, we'll just do it above here and we'll 
call it something slightly different so I can be very easily compare. And so I'm going to do a define. In this case, I'm going to call it is underscore odd. And then we'll do an N. I like to use an uppercase letter to remind myself that this is uh, a um, macro. And then it's going to basically return, or it's going to replace any instance of is odd with a parameter of N with N percent two. That's going to be N modulo two. That's basically what we have in our is odd function. Not basically, actually it is. It's going to return exactly this value. And so then all I need to do is down here in my function, uh, I can just call is odd is now replace that with is underscore odd. It's the same program. I'm just now replacing the is odd function with a macro. And so every time my program is going to use is underscore odd, which is right here, it's going to replace it with n percent two, or in this case, because I'm calling it with count, uh, it's going to uh, do that with uh, count percent two. And as I say up there, I like to put that in parentheses, of course, so that way when the stuff gets replaced, it doesn't mess up any evaluations or anything else I've got going on in my program. Now this can run just a tiny bit faster uh, than using a function. And if you're on a slower system, that can really mean a lot. Uh, let's go ahead and actually compile this. So let's go and save and quit. And we're going to do I 16 GCC with an output of is odd. We'll call it is odd two uh, dot exe and compiling the is odd dot C source file. So this way we actually have a new program that uh, is using the macro instead of a function. And so the programs are just a tiny bit smaller, uh, but it's also not a very big uh, difference here. So let's go ahead and now run this program is odd two. And it does the same thing as I had before. So it's, it's giving me zero is even one is odd two is even three is odd all the way up to nine being odd. And so it's just a tiny bit of memory overhead for functions. It doesn't add up a lot for a small program like this, but you can imagine if you have a larger program that's more complicated, using a macro here and there can actually save you a little bit of execution time. And that's one way that you can optimize programs when you're writing in C. So what do you think about this program? Would you like to see more about how to optimize programs? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. I, I use Patreon to help me take time away from my consulting practice so I can make these videos and to support the website. Some of you are supporting me at a higher level and I want to say thanks to you here. Visit our website, join us on Facebook, follow us on Mastodon and consider supporting me on Patreon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.